Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, it's time to select my March TBR. All right, everybody, it is already that time of the month. It is time to select my TBR for the next month, which is wild, but also at the same time, not surprising because I feel like February has been the longest month ever, which is funny because it's the shortest month of the year. I don't know. It just felt like it's dragged on and on and on. But anyway, as always, before we get into the gameplay and the challenge polls for March, we have to recap how I did for the month of February. So starting with the challenge polls, the very first challenge poll that I pulled for February was to read one of your recommendations, and that was an autobiography of a face by Lucy Greeley, which I did read. The the second challenge poll was actually a challenge prompt and that was to read a book written by a neurodivergent author and for that I selected Crooked House by Agatha Christie which I did read. Challenge poll number three was to continue the Will Trent series by Karen Slaughter. For this I needed to read the second book in that series which was Fractured and I did read that. Challenge poll number four was another challenge prompt and that was to read a book featuring indigenous culture and for that I read Killers of the Flower Moon by David Grand which was a true crime nonfiction and of course I did read that. And the very final challenge poll was to read The Chain by Adrian McGinty, which I did read. Moving on into the gameplay prompt, the very first prompt that I needed to satisfy was to read the shortest book on my TBR, and the shortest book at that time was The Last Thing to Burn by Will Dean, which I did read. Next, I landed on the prompt to read a book featuring multiple point of views, and for that I selected No One Can Know by K. Alice Marshall, which I did read. Then I landed on the prompt to start a series, and I selected Red Rising for that prompt, and I did read that. The next prompt was to read a second chance book or author. For that, I selected Rachel Hawkins and The Heiress, and I did read that. And then the very final prompt that I had to satisfy for gameplay was to read a book with green on the cover and for that I selected When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean which I did read. So obviously it was a very successful reading month and that I read everything on my February TBR so we will not be taking any punishments going on into March and we can start fresh. Now as per usual we are going to start with five challenge prompts. I hope that they are kind to me this month. Um, some of the ones from last month were a little bit challenging. Some of them were definitely outside of my comfort zone. So we are going to see what this challenge cut brings to me today. I am going to, oh my gosh this is packed so full y'all okay all right I got one here A book with wings on the cover. Okay, so I actually already satisfied this challenge prompt with Red Rising, so I do not need to satisfy this anymore, so we'll go ahead and pull again. And that will definitely happen because if I am reading books that could satisfy some of the challenge prompts that are in here, I'm going to automatically satisfy them. I'm not going to wait to pull the prompt just to satisfy them, so we might encounter that a few times here and there. All right, let's go ahead and try this again. Oh, I think it's upside down. Is it upside down? Let's see. A book related to the sea. Okay, so this means that I have to read a book that is related to the sea in some capacity. Maybe it takes place on a boat. Maybe it's set by the beach. So I will have to find a book that satisfies this prompt. I don't know offhand what I'm going to use for this, but hopefully by the time I'm editing this video, I will know and I will be able to pop it up on the screen for you here. All right, challenge pull number two. All right, let's see what we got. includes a personal phobia. Okay, so it's another challenge prompt and I have to read a book that features something that scares me. All right, that's another one that I'm going to have to think about because off the top of my head, I cannot think of what exactly scares me. So this is another one that is going to require some research. And again, if I know what it is by the time that I'm editing, I will pop it up on the screen here for you. When I'm doing these challenge pulls and it comes up with the challenge prompts, a lot of these, I don't already have something pre-selected. So I have to like do a little bit of digging to figure out what's next. Okay, here's challenge pull number three. All right, it's a long one. So it's one from you. I'm going to try to to get it to focus here. Okay, Douchened Through the Snow by David Rosenfeld. Okay, with a cute little play on words in there, it sounds like this is, might be like a cute wintry holiday romance, which is an interesting choice for March. Let me pull it up and see if we can find out what this is about. Okay, so this says that it's number 20 in the Andy Carpenter series by David Rosenfeld. So I'm going to assume that I don't need to read any of these in order in order to read this one. And I think it's going to be a cozy mystery. It says, this Christmas, lawyer Andy Carpenter and his golden retriever Tara can't say no to helping young Danny and his dash hound Murphy. Lawyer Andy Carpenter and his wife Lori have started a new Christmas tradition. Their local pet store has a Christmas tree where instead of ornaments there are wishes from those in need. One poignant wish leads Andy to a child named Danny whose selfless plea strikes a chord. Danny asks Santa for a coat for his mother, a sweater for his douche hound, and for the safe return of his missing father. It turns out Danny's father doesn't want to be found. He's on the run after just being arrested for a murder that took place 14 years ago, a murder that Danny's mother swears he didn't commit. With his trademark humor and larger than life characters, including a police officer and his canine partner Simon, Rosenfeld never fails to deliver as Andy and his eccentric crew dash to 
to reunite a family in time for Christmas. All right, so this is definitely not what I was expecting for March. I'm not exactly mad about it because I think that this is just going to be like a cute, fun read. I am going to be honest and straightforward in that I don't really like cozy mysteries. I don't expect this to be a new favorite. It'll probably be a good fun time, but nothing substantial or memorable for me, but it is one of your recommendations. So I'm definitely going to be giving it a go in March. All right, challenge pool number four. Okay, let's see what we got. Ooh, the Happy Ever After playlist. So this is the second book in the Friend Zone trilogy, and I really love Abby Jimenez. She is probably one of my favorite romance authors, and I really enjoyed the Friend Zone. I had some technical issues with it, but overall, I felt like it was a wonderful romance, and I know exactly who this book follows, and something very traumatic happened to this character in the first book, and I know that we're going to be following her story in the second, and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of emotion. There's going to be a lot of grief involved, and I am here for it. I am actually very happy to be getting to this one. So this was a solid choice. All right. And then the very last one, let's hope this last one is kind to me as well. Okay, Neon Gods by Katie Robert. This was recommended to me by Kia the Cat. I believe that this is a Hades and Persephone retelling. Now, I'm going to be quite honest with you in that way back when I was doing the Amazing Readathon last year, I had to read a retelling. And so I was searching for a Hades and Persephone retelling. I started this one. I got about a chapter into it and I decided that it was like not quite the vibe I was going for, but I did end up reading the one by Scarlet St. Clair. So I will absolutely be giving this one a shot. I know a lot of people love Katie Robert. I know a lot of people really enjoy this series. So I'm going to give it a fair shot and hopefully I enjoy it more that I think that I'm going to. All right, so those are the five challenge pulls for the month of March. Now let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. All right, everybody, it is time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. This time we are playing for March. As usual, we are just going to do the standard six rounds unless the board is unkind to me. The board should be exactly as it was when I last left it. Let's go ahead and see how kind the board is to me this time. All right, we have a four, which is a backwards movement, and none of my pawns are currently in an ideal location for this, so it's an unkind movement. Let's see what color I'm moving. All right, well, I only have one active pawn out on the playing field that is blue, so we're gonna do one, two, three, four, and that is a book with winter vibes. All right, so the first draw was a number four in the color blue. This landed me on the prompt of winter, meaning I had to read a book with winter vibes. Maybe it's set in the winter, maybe there's winter in the title. And for this, I think I'm going to select Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. This is one that I received last year as part of the Facebook gifting groups that I'm a part of, and I really wanted to get to it before the end of last year, and I didn't. So I think now would be the perfect opportunity. I absolutely love Kate Quinn. She is now becoming one of my favorite historical fiction authors and I feel like I'm going to love this immensely. This I believe is following a female sniper. It says, Rye and bookish history student Mila Pavlichenko organizes her life around her library job and her young son. But Hitler's invasion of Russia sends her on a different path. Given a rifle and sent to join the fight, Mila must transform herself from studious girl to deadly sniper, a lethal hunter of Nazis known as Lady Death. When news of her 300th kill makes her a national heroine, Mila is torn from the battlefields of the Eastern Front and sent to America on a goodwill tour. Still reeling from more wounds and devastated by loss, Mila finds herself isolated and lonely in the glittering world of Washington, D.C. with an unexpected friendship with First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and an even more unexpected connection with a silent fellow sniper offered the possibility of happiness. But when an old enemy from Mila's past joins forces with a deadly new foe lurking in the shadows, Lady Death finds herself battling her own demons and enemy bullets in the deadliest duel of her life. Based on a true story, The Diamond Eye is a haunting novel of heroism of a mother who became a soldier and of a woman who found her place in the world and changed the course of history forever. So I am absolutely completely down for this one. I am excited to finally be getting to it and I think that I'm going to love this one. Draw number two. All right, we have a six and yellow that is a pretty straightforward movement. I'm going to turn the board and we will see what we get. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Someone's TBR. So that basically means I have to find a book that is on someone's preferably March TBR, but I'm willing to do back TBRs from like January or February and pick a book from one of their TBRs that I want to read. All right, then I drew the number six and the color yellow, and that landed me on the prompt to read a book that is on someone else's TBR. So this is another one that I really don't have a selection for at this time because I need to kind of wait and see people's March TBR. So if you want to comment down below and let me know some books on your March TBR, I would absolutely love to hear it to give me some ideas on what I could potentially feature. But this is another one that I'm going to have to wait to select and it could be a while before I make a selection on this one. So I don't even know if I'm going to have an option by the time I'm editing this video. But of course, I will be sure to let you know what I eventually picked for it when I'm doing my April TBR. All right, draw number three. 
All right, so that was very nice of the board. That is a get out of jail free card. So if for some reason I'm not able to finish my TBR for one month, I can lay down, I can utilize a king and not have to take any punishments. I definitely already have a few of these stored up. So this gentleman is just going to go with the rest of them. All right, next I drew a king and that is a get out of jail free. So that is basically if I do not finish all the books on my TBR, I do not have to take a punishment prompt if I use a king. No book is selected for this draw. All right, draw number four. All right, so with an ace, I can either move forward one or get a pun out of start. The only color that is still in start is yellow. So with this green gentleman, I have to move him forward one. So let me go ahead and move the board again and we will see what prompt I land on. All right, so if I move this gentleman one, it is continuous series, which is always something that I need to be doing. So I'm not mad about that. All right, then I drew the number one and the color green and this prompt is to continue a series. Now, I think I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to select Defend the Dawn by Bridget Kemmerer. The reason it's cheating is because I actually actually started this in February. After I finished Red Rising and I needed another immersion read, I was trying to figure out what I was going to read and then this came to me as a gift and so I thought it was the perfect opportunity to go ahead and pick it up since I needed an immersion read. Now I'm not even halfway through this book yet so I still have over halfway to go and that's why I think I'm going to allow myself to select this for my March TBR because I'm definitely not going to be finishing it until I am in the March month for sure. I'm not going to really have many opportunities to read this between now and the final end of February so I think I'm going to make this my official selection. However, there is a pretty big sequel that is being released in March and while I typically do not get to new releases right away, I think this is one I might allow myself to get to right away because I'm probably going to just get an audible credit for it and that is Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff. This is the second book in his Empire of the Vampire series. I read Empire of the Vampire a couple of years ago and that was a saga y'all. It was quite large. I will definitely need to read a spoiler filled recap to figure out everything that happened in that book because all of the details are kind of lost to me at this point. But since a lot of the other fantasies that I would like to immersively read are are not actively available to me like I'm waiting for them for my library I think that it would be a good idea to just go ahead and dive right into this one and get it off of my TBR as soon as possible so whether or not I make defend the dawn fit this prompt or whether I do empire of the damned either way both of them continue a series so this prompt will certainly be satisfied draw number five So with a seven, I can technically split the movement between two pawns, but as I only have one active red pawn, I'm just going to move him seven. Once again, I need to move the board, so let me do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Second chance. So that means second chance author or second chance book. So maybe it's an author that I've tried and disliked in the past or a book that I've soft DNF'd. What have you, I just need to do a second chance. All right, then I drew the number seven and the color red and that landed me again on second chance. I actually had that prompt last month. And for this, I think I'm going to select The Coppersmith Farmhouse by Debney Perry. Now I have specifically tried this book and one other Debney Perry in the past. And each time I've started these books, I've only gotten a couple of chapters in and I have stopped reading them. And if you know me, if you've been around my channel for any length of time, or even if you just watched that video that I recently made about my perfect romance novel, you will know I do not want the characters, the main romance leads to instantly be eye-fucking each other as soon as they meet. I just cannot stand that. I think it is absolutely obnoxious. Now, granted, I know that it's not unrealistic. You know what I mean? I understand that instant attraction absolutely happens, but when it's a book and I know that there are going to be three to 400 pages for me to read, I really want that slow burn. I want the sexual tension and the chemistry to be built. I just feel like when it's so instant like that and the characters are constantly talking about how hot the other one is, I just feel like that's lazy storytelling and it's all tell and no show. I really want the author to show me the chemistry and show me why these characters are attracted to each other and why they are supposed to be with each other. Both times that I've started a Devney Perry, I feel like it's going in the insta-love or insta-lust direction. Now, I could be completely mistaken because again, I haven't given these books a full fair shot yet. But the reason I picked this one up again is because I was originally going to do a vlog reading popular spicy TikTok books. And of course, these were ones that I had at least some inclination to read already. They weren't just ones that I picked up specifically for that vlog because I don't like doing that. I don't like reading books just for content's sake. So I picked this one up and also y'all, I just love her covers. I think her covers are absolutely stunning. I haven't unhauled it yet, even though I've decided not to continue with that vlog. So I figured that this would be the perfect opportunity to finally give Devney Perry a fair shot. This one says, Gigi has just uprooted her whole world to start a new life. The unexpected gift of a farmhouse in small town Montana is just what she and her daughter need to 
to escape big city loneliness. The last thing she needs is attitude from the town's sheriff, the most perfectly attractive and ruggedly handsome man she's ever laid eyes on, and a complete jerk. Jess knows all about women like Gigi, beautiful, sexy, scheming. She's stolen his sanctuary, the farmhouse that should have been his, but along with a face full of freckles, she's got a sharp wit and a backbone of steel, something he doesn't discover until after making a complete fool of himself. If he can earn back her trust and win her heart, he might just find the home he's always needed. So I love the concept of it, and I know that Devney Perry is a very, very popular romance author, so I am very excited to give her another shot, and hopefully I love her and want to continue this series. All right, and then the sixth and final draw. All right, so with a 10, I can either move backwards one or forwards 10, and I'm gonna go ahead and make that decision based on the prompt. So if I move this guy backwards one, he would land on book talk fave, and if I moved him 10, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Book club pick. Okay, so neither one of these are ideal because I do not have a book club pick for March. I've already read the book that's going to be part of the book club that I am in, and with book talk faves, I've pretty much read all the ones that I wanna read, and I'm not interested in the others, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and go backwards one and do book talk fave. All right. And and then the very final draw with the number 10 and the color blue and I actually decided to move backwards one for this and I landed again on the book talk favorite. I believe that was a January prompt so we're getting a lot of duplicates and for this one I actually think I'm going to read The Things We Leave Unfinished by Rebecca Yoros. So March is actually looking to be a pretty heavy romance month which is kind of unusual. I was definitely intrigued by Rebecca Yoros because of course everybody knows her for the fourth wing series but before that she was very popular in the contemporary romance world but I never knew anything about her and when I found out that she was really popular in romance Romance, I was really intrigued to find out what she had written and it looks like a lot of her books feature that harder hitting element that I'm looking for and this one particularly caught my eye. It says 28 year old Georgia Stanton has to start over after she gave up almost everything in a brutal divorce. The New York house, the friends, and her pride. Now back home at her late great grandmother's estate in Colorado she finds herself face to face with Noah Harrison the best-selling author of a million books where the cover is always people nearly kissing. He's just as arrogant in person as in interviews and she'll be damned if the good-looking writer of love stories thinks he's the one to finish her grandmother's final novel. Even if the publisher swears he's the perfect fit. Noah is at the pinnacle of his career. With book and movie deals galore, there isn't much the golden boy of modern fiction hasn't accomplished, but he can't walk away from what might be the best book of the century, the one his idol, Scarlett Stanton, left unfinished. Coming up with a fitting ending for the legendary author is one thing, but dealing with her beautiful, stubborn, cynical great-granddaughter, Georgia, is quite another. But as they read Scarlett's words in both the manuscript and her box of letters, they start to realize why Scarlett never finished the book. It's based on her real-life romance with a World War II pilot, and the ending isn't a happy one. Georgia knows all too well that love never works out and while the chemistry and connection between her and Noah is undeniable she's as determined as ever to learn from her great-grandmother's mistakes even if it means destroying Noah's career. Oh my gosh that sounds phenomenal. I'm very excited to get into this one. I really enjoyed Fourth Wing. I feel like Rebecca Yaros has a lot of potential in the fantasy genre but I think that she probably met her potential or exceeded it here so I am very excited to get to this one. All right everybody that is it. That is the TBR for March. It is quite a mixed bag and there are definitely books that I still have to select for this TBR based on the challenge prompts that I selected so I will do my best to make those selections while I'm editing this video. I'm actually really excited about a lot of the books that are on the TBR this time. So please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books that are on my TBR and what your thoughts are. Or also be sure to let me know some books that are on your March TBR that I could consider adding to my own TBR to satisfy the prompt of reading a book on someone else's TBR. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a little envelope emoji in honor of The Things We Leave Unfinished by Rebecca Yaros. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two days a week on Wednesdays and Sundays and I would love to connect with you in any of those videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.